Hello and welcome to 1851 Franchises, Top Women in Franchising for 2024. I'm Erica Inman and today I am joined by Lisa Almeida, owner of the Freedom Boat Club Jacksonville and St. Augustine. How are you doing today, Lisa? Good, I'm doing great. It's a little warmer here in Jacksonville and that makes a Bodanista happy. So yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> um, can you share with us your journey uh, to becoming a leader in franchising? Oh my gosh, yes. So I um, had, a, well, my background is uh, my parents were competitive water skiers. And um, my mom was, you know, practicing till I was, you know, she was like six weeks pregnant and they were like, you need to stop. And so uh, after I was born, they put me in the boat. And uh, I've been smelling outboard motor oil ever since I was born. And so I've always loved boating and had a passion for boating and bought my first boat when I was 24 years old. And so pause that conversation. I had a tw after college, I had a 25 year career in Bell South uh, advertising and marketing and uh, Bell South and AT&T were getting ready to come back together again. And I was ready to do something different. Um, and so I left uh, and I had only five years to retirement, but I just decided to leave. And then um, I did consulting for them for a year. And then I decided to take a year off to kind of reinvent myself. And literally, I read some books like Finding Your Purpose and all of that. And, um, and I prayed every day because I'm a woman of faith. And I was like, God, show me, point me. What do you want me to do? And so a good friend of mine that's a captain on the boat called me one day and said, hey, I got a job for you. And I was like, what is it? And he said, you know, selling boat club memberships and we're going on a 65 foot. Yeah. And I went, oh, what, what time? When do I need to be there? <laughs> I'm in. And uh, so what happened was in the franchise system at Freedom Boat Club, if one of the owners, um, you know, is not is not doing what they require, what they want, they will, you know, take corporate will take over that location until they find a suitable owner. And so that's what had happened in Jacksonville. And so corporate hired me to come in and sort of, you know, uh, take it to the level that it needed to be. And I worked for them for a year and a half. And then my business partner and I bought the business. Oh, that's amazing. So it was just, uh, and when I told my friends, like what my job was going to be, they're like, are you kidding me? Like, so I'm either going to be on a boat thinking about boating at a boat show or buying a boat or talking to people about boating. It's like, you know, mm -hmm. and then my moniker, my trade name came out of it, both the Bodanista. And uh, it's just been an incredible journey. So. Yeah. It sounds like a dream. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Um, what unique challenges or opportunities do you think there are for women in franchising? So I think that, you know, it's funny when I was at Bell South and I'll tell you when I, I started my career with them in 1982, um, my first promotion that I got, there was only one other manager that was a woman and women, you know, really weren't respected in that field. And so, so much has changed now, you know, uh, and people realize the, power that women have. And so for me, especially being in the marine industry, you know, it because it's really a male dominated industry. But, um, you know, I found that people loved that a woman w could do it and was embracing it. And um, so I really like I think now we're so much further ahead there's not as many challenges for women. I think that, you know, society has realized, you know, we can do whatever we put our mind to. And I, I mean, I see that incredible in the marine industry. You know, Captain Sandy on, is on Below Deck, a uh, reality show. She's a woman. We have women mechanics in the marine industry. Um, we have, there. it's just incredible. So I really think, now there's no limit. And what I would say is if you think there's a limit, change your thinking because you can do it. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. Yeah. How do you define success in your role? So for me, success is when 
So my members, which are my customers, are happy and thriving. My team is happy and thriving. You know, they enjoy their job and they love what they do. And my members show up at the dock and they can see that and they can feel that. And, um, you know, we're working as a well-oiled, cohesive machine. Success for me is when I'm at a networking event or I'm somewhere and it comes up that I'm the owner of Freedom Boat Club and people say, oh my gosh, I hear such good things about it. That's so awesome. And it's, it's walking your walk, talking your talk and doing what you say you're going to do. And if you do that, you will be successful. And then I think for my business partner and I, we both love boating. We're very passionate about boating. So, I mean, I work all the time, but I don't feel like I work. You know, um, I just feel like I get to play with what I love. So. That's incredible. Yeah. Um, what advice would you give to franchisors who are looking to support and empower female franchisees? So what I would say is don't look at whether it's a female or a male. Look at what the qualifications are. Look at what she can bring to the table. And I'll tell you a funny story. So when they interviewed me for the job, they interviewed 12 people, 11 men and me. That it's a, tr it's absolutely true. And I would find out years later that the two people interviewing me had really kind of already decided that a woman couldn't do the job. And then they met me and I wowed them in the interview. And so I would say, you know, don't put us in a box just look at what the qualifications are. It's almost like they couldn't say no to me. I was a boater. I had incredible sales and marketing background. I knew the city. I was very well connected. Like I checked all the boxes. Forget I'm a woman. Look at the qualifications of the person. Right. I love how you challenged that stereotype they had. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, is Sorry, uh, what advice would you give to any women who are aiming to enter the franchise industry for the first time? Oh, my gosh. What I would say is you, you've got you have such an incredible opportunity. And what I love about franchising is you're connected to a network. You know, you're not out there trying to make the secret sauce by yourself. The franchise has made the secret sauce for you. You've got basically business in a box. You know what I mean? And if you don't know the answer, all you got to do is pick up the phone and call the franchisor or call another franchisee, you know? And so there's so much opportunity for you. What you basically need to do is find out what, what connects with your heart, what makes your heart sing, what is going to make you want to get up every day and go do it. And when you find that franchise, then go after that. And, right. you know, if there, and the other thing I would say, if there's a will, there's a way. So when we were getting ready to purchase the business, you know, it was a pretty big number and I had to come up with some money and having come from the corporate world, all of my money was in my 401k. And so if I pulled it out, it was going to be a penalty and I was going to have to pay tax, you know, and all of that. And so I'm like thinking, you know, brainstorming on ways. How can I get this money? And I had a condo that I owned. I met with, went, met with my bank and they're like, Hey, you own this condo outright, take a mortgage on the condo and then you can get. So I would say, think creatively in ways to come up with the money and don't think just because you're in, you know, this is how you've done it. Or you think this is what your finances are there. Think outside the box and there's ways to make it happen is as far as, you know, getting the financing, if, if the financing is a problem yeah. and, you know, at Bell South, thank goodness I was trained to take 10 no's. So, you know, that next no is getting me closer to that. Yes. So just keep asking, just keep plugging. And if it's in your heart and you're supposed to be doing it, it will happen. That's a great mindset. Is there anything else you think our audience should know? 
just that, you know, it hasn't always been sunshine and roses. <laughs> and there are going to be moments when it's tough. And that's when you prove who you really are. You know, that's when you dig in and, you know, you go for it and you lean on friends, you lean on colleagues. Um, you know, I, I'm really blessed in that, you know, I have organizations that I belong to and vendors that I can reach out to, you know, there are people out there that will, you know, help you. And so just know there's going to be some bumps. It's how you handle the bumps that is going to make the difference. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's all I had for you today, Lisa, but thank you so much for joining us. And thank you so much. Awesome. And uh, I'm going to close with inboard, outboard, onboard, never bored. Get on the water. <laughs>